Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Diana Molina sat at the bar of the nightclub and involuntarily recalled the theory that a person's life is a series of black and white stripes. Self-taught psychologists often said that life is like a zebra, and if a person is on a black stripe, they should not despair because a bright future awaits ahead. Others jokingly recommended stocking up on white paint and fixing the situation to their liking. But Diana was not comforted by these pieces of advice. They irritated her because she saw no enlightenment in the succession of troubles and did not foresee a brighter future. On the contrary, problems rained down on her like an abundance horn. There's a feeling that in my past life, I was destroying people and cute kittens, and in a cruel way, Diana complained to her best friend Sylvia, who kept her company this night. Otherwise, why would I be plagued like this? The only light waiting for me will be at the end of the tunnel. Sylvia Blanco, though she had become accustomed to her friend's dark humor over the past month, still flinched after such statements. She immediately grabbed Diana's hand and tried to assure her that she shouldn't think that way. Thoughts are material, Diana. Sylvia scolded, looking into her friend's eyes. You should think about good things, positive things. Got it? So that the universe can hear you. By the way, the universe is very sensitive to words, requests, and thoughts. It always responds to powerful energy charges. You have to watch your thoughts and words. A lot of things come true. Sylvia was a girl obsessed with esoterics, horoscopes, mantras, and affirmations. She chose boyfriends based on their zodiac sign, and she started her day in front of the mirror, charging herself for success. Diana, on the other hand, was her opposite. She didn't believe in any of that at all. She was convinced that in this life, you had to achieve things with your own efforts, advance at work through hard work and professionalism, maintain a good figure through workouts at the gym, but certainly not with phrases like, I am successful and beautiful. Now, having drunk enough cocktails and being in an extremely irritated mood, she skeptically raised an eyebrow, then snapped her fingers and demanded, looking up at the high ceiling of the club building and addressing the universe. Okay, I want Johnny Depp to bring me a suitcase filled with money, then take me to his Hollywood, or wherever he is now, and my ex-husband can bite his elbows in envy. I want my test results to turn out to be a doctor's joke because oncologists have such a specific sense of humor. Do you hear me, universe? You definitely owe me, so I'm waiting. Then, after waiting a bit, she looked at her friend again. Maybe there's bad signal here. The universe isn't responding. Maybe it should change its mobile plan. Sylvia remained silent, fixing her light hair behind her ears. She didn't comment on her friend's childishness, and she couldn't be offended by her, at least not right now. You know, I still can't believe it. The girl confessed, looking at her best friend with pity and concern. Maybe the test results weren't yours? What do you mean? Diana snorted and, finishing her sweet cocktail in one gulp, asked the bartender for a refill. You know, mix them up? Her friend speculated. Hey, I once tried to apply for a mortgage. Everything was already arranged. I even paid a deposit. They called me from the bank, said the loan was approved, and then a couple of days later, they called again and said they confused me with another person who has the same name. Can you imagine? They found another Sylvia Blanco in our city, in one district. So, I didn't get the loan or the apartment, and they didn't even return my deposit. Well, almost. That owner didn't want to give it back to me, although he promised. I even had to hire a lawyer but it all worked out well. Let me ask, what good came out of this situation? You lost time, money, and nerves, Diana asked thoughtfully. Well, for example, I had an affair with that lawyer, Blanco eagerly shared, grinning. He was incredibly handsome. And what a body he had. Simply stunning. Although, we quickly broke up. He was a Scorpio by horoscope. They are just unbearable. And I can't afford to live on antidepressants, even for passionate nights. Diana laughed, shaking her head, thinking, oh, that's Sylvia. 
Although Diana didn't understand her friend's lifestyle and the ease with which she approached everything, she sometimes even envied Blanco. She flitted through life like a butterfly. Everything came easily to her. And if there were any unpleasant situations, she managed to find the silver lining in them. At this moment, looking at her friend's profile, Diana mentally looked back, examined her own life with a critical and scrutinizing eye, and realized with horror that she had nothing to hold on to. Diana had been a straight-A student, the pride of her parents and teachers, an athlete, and a beauty who served as an example to her classmates and the neighborhood kids. Just an example of Wonder Girl. She graduated from high school with honors, enrolled in a university majoring in advertising and public relations, naturally completed her university studies with excellent results, and married Ignacio, whom she had met during her first year at university. Shortly after the wedding, she found a job in her field. Three years after graduating from university, Diana held the position of chief editor at an image agency. Her experience was interesting and diverse. Among the agency's clients were large medical centers, auto repair shops, and shopping centers. She mostly wrote texts for corporate newspapers and magazines, the goal of which was to elevate the company's image to unprecedented heights. She communicated with the owners of various client firms, attended meetings, conferences, and events to highlight them in favorable terms. In general, she fit seamlessly into this world. Diana loved her job, but she was paid very little. Her boss constantly told Diana that they had critically little money, but managed to take several trips a year to prestigious resorts. Diana listened to her boss's explanations for a long time, pretending to believe her. It continued like this until last month. That's when Diana happened to stumble upon a job vacancy for a PR manager at the prominent Mirage agency on their website and promptly applied. Mirage was a young but rapidly growing advertising agency that had suddenly become a household name. They were always involved in sponsorship programs, charity events, and launched new projects in the media and info business sectors. Among the company's clients were renowned brands and celebrities. Trying to get into the company was a bold move, but as they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So, Diana dialed the coveted number, and they scheduled an interview. And now, at the appointed hour, she stood at the elusive door. Our boss loves young and creative people. He always gives them a chance, even if they have little experience, and you have tons of it. I'm sure he'll appreciate you. He's currently away. He'll be back in a month, but he'll respond via email, Diana was informed by the HR manager, Anna. However, he's a very complex person. So be prepared for anything if you get accepted. We pay exceptionally well, but the requirements are high. He hates lateness, project delays, and any excuses. There's a lot he doesn't like. He's a very complicated man, although incredibly handsome. But he doesn't pay attention to anyone. As she said this, the girl pouted in resentment. It was clear that she had already tried to invite her boss on a date, but it didn't work out, and it greatly upset her. To give her credit, the manager was extremely attractive and had a curvaceous figure. Her immodest neckline displayed her ample bosom to everyone, and her plump lips glistened with pink gloss, causing Diana to inadvertently think that only few men would pass by such a doll. However, neither her boss's orientation nor her relationships with colleagues interested the girl. She was only attracted to the job, and yes, she got it. A week later, the mysterious demon boss approved her candidacy. The girl waved her handkerchief in farewell to her boss and darted off to her new job. They tried to keep her, promising her many good things, but Diana no longer believed it. To her surprise, Diana was welcomed with open arms at Mirage. They were impressed with her project portfolio and the stack of magazines that came from her pen. She liked the team. However, her colleagues constantly frightened Diana with the imminent return of the boss, saying, wait until Eduardo, our boss, comes back, then we'll see what you'll do. Although it's clear even now you'll be looking for a new job. He won't leave anyone here at work just for their pretty face. Diana worked at Mirage for almost a month. 
She felt that a new, beautiful, and happy stage of her life had begun. However, everything was ruined by a visit to the doctor. Sometime after losing both her parents, Diana began to feel unwell, so she rushed to the nearest private clinic. There, she received a disheartening diagnosis, and the doctor's verdict was like a thunderbolt on a clear day. Unfortunately, the diagnosis is rare. Treatment will be complex and challenging, but I can't guarantee a full recovery, he told the patient. However, we will do everything in our power. I have excellent doctors. Trust us. What if I don't get treated? Diana asked then, her gaze fixed on the trash can in the doctor's office because she was afraid that the news would make her feel so bad that she'd throw up her breakfast. The doctor was surprised by her question and shook his head. Not get treated? He repeated in annoyance. Then I give you six months, maybe a year. Six months, Diana echoed with a thoughtful sigh. That same evening, she came home to her husband and poured out everything the doctor had told her. She added, I found out what awaits me if I go into the clinic. I'll just spend my last days away from loved ones, under some medications that will keep my soul and my body and hinder me from living peacefully. Tubes will be sticking out of me, and my bald head will always be covered. I realized I don't want that, so I made the decision not to undergo treatment. Ignacio, upon hearing his wife, was initially frightened, then even got angry. So, you are not going to get treated? Have you lost your mind? If there's even a chance, we should use it. No, Diana shook her head. There's no guarantee of recovery, and I want to spend the rest of my life in sound mind. Maybe even to the fullest. Perhaps we can go on a trip together? I've always dreamed of it, but there was never time. I think now is the time. Remember, I wanted to see whales? It's unlikely, but at least dolphins. What whales, Diana? Her husband suddenly yelled. What dolphins? You want to die somewhere in the sea or a foreign country? What about me afterward? Diana frowned at such a reaction. She had expected support, even if he didn't want to understand her. Maybe you shouldn't bury me in advance? She asked, not harboring any anger or resentment, just a slight disappointment. They argued for a long time, but Diana remained resolute. She realized that she hadn't accomplished enough in her life, and now that she had a best before date, she needed to make the most of her remaining time. However, Ignacio didn't just fail to support his wife, he stabbed her in the back. That evening, Diana returned home early and caught Ignacio packing his things. Are we finally going on vacation? It's strange that you're packing a suitcase for just one person, Diana said, standing in the doorway of their bedroom. Ignacio, who hadn't heard his wife come in, jumped with his whole body. When he saw his wife, he hesitated, looked away, ruffled his brown hair, and then cursed under his breath, staring at her with anger. You know, you're to blame yourself. Do you think anyone wants to watch a person die? I read what's waiting for you. I can't be a caregiver for a sick person. I'm leaving to Olga. To Olga? Diana asked, not feeling anger or offense, but only mild disappointment. The same Olga you said was just a friend and colleague, right? Your lovely secretary. Ignacio Molina owned a small construction company specializing in private homes. He had a difficult start to his business. Diana was the one who supported him at every stage. At times, she worked alone, feeding their young family while her husband tried to grow the business. It was Diana who worked late nights on the company's advertising and public relations. She even sought out clients, acting as a manager. Olga had been working with Ignacio for two years already, holding the position of secretary. She joined his construction company when Ignacio had already achieved some success. She could be seen as having come to a ready-made situation. However, Diana couldn't have imagined that Olga would not only land a job vacancy, but also catch the eye of her boss. Sylvia was never fond of Olga. She had said to her friend more than once, this secretary looks at your Ignacio too often and laughs too loudly at his unfunny jokes. She annoys me. 
If Olga had seen Ignacio before he met you, he was a nobody, and now he's strutting around. However, Diana, not being a jealous troublemaker, believed Ignacio, who swore there was nothing between him and Olga. As it turned out, her naivety had played a cruel trick on her. How long have you been with her? Diana asked, looking at the pile of crumpled clothes that her husband had somehow managed to stuff into a suitcase. Just be honest, Ignacio. Sometime, her husband muttered through gritted teeth. Diana nodded and then went to the kitchen to brew herself some coffee. She waited until the front door closed behind her unfaithful husband before throwing the still full cup against the wall. Then she looked at the light brown stain on the wallpaper, shifted her gaze to the shards of her beloved cup, and began to cry bitterly. Diana sat on the floor, hugging her knees, letting her tears flow freely. It felt like her life had shattered just like that cup, in an instant, into numerous sharp fragments. Squeeze something like that in your hands, and it will pierce your skin and leave a wound. Diana spent another week in this state. She took sick leave from work, although she knew the consequences it might have, as she was still on probation. But she couldn't find the strength to do even the simplest things, let alone smile at her colleagues or generate creative ideas. All these events eventually led Diana to the nightclub Platinum, or rather, she was dragged here by Sylvia, who first forced her friend to take a bath and put on some makeup. She even picked out a dress for her. The crimson dress with thin straps looked expensive and stunning on the brunette. Sylvia claimed that the loud music, a good dose of alcohol, and the club atmosphere would at least partially bring Diana back to her senses. She turned out to be right. However, it wasn't the strobe lights or the music from the speakers that shook Diana but a man. The brunette sat at the bar around one in the morning and ordered whiskey on the rocks from the barman. This man sat across from the two women. Diana gave him a brief glance, involuntarily noticing that the stranger was incredibly handsome. Sharp cheekbones, dark, thick hair, tall with a trendy haircut. He was dressed in a dark gray jacket, a shirt, and jeans that didn't hide but emphasized the difference between his broad shoulders and narrow waist. Sylvia also noticed the young man. She leaned closer to her friend and whispered, Who let the guy from a magazine cover in here? I'm ready to bet my favorite designer purse that beneath all those layers of clothing is a perfect athletic figure. She enthusiastically whispered to her friend. Oh my God, the universe heard you, but instead of an older dip, it sent Apollo from the heavens, dressed in expensive clothes. Diana snorted with laughter into her glass. At that moment, she was drinking, which caused the cocktail to dribble back through the straw and splash into her glass. Still laughing, Diana wiped her lips and set the glass aside. Strangely enough, it was this awkward moment that caught the attention of the stranger. He raised an eyebrow ever so slightly, and his lips twitched into a smile when he noticed the brunette. Diana quickly turned away, continuing to chat with her friend about trivial matters. However, the man had left such an impression on her that her thoughts kept returning to him. After some time, Diana couldn't resist and discreetly cast another glance in his direction. To her surprise, she found that the stranger was also looking at her. When their gazes met, he gave her a charming smile. Diana, unexpectedly for herself, felt a wave of shyness wash over her. She was completely flustered under the gaze of his light gray eyes. Is he looking at you? Sylvia asked and then squealed excitedly as if answering her own question. He's looking at you. Listen, you have to go talk to him. What? Diana asked, eyes wide with fear. Are you out of your mind? You're out of your mind if you plan to miss such an opportunity. The universe. Say universe one more time and I'll put a cross on our long-standing friendship and I'll die in proud solitude, Diana muttered. Well, Diana, the doctors told you that you don't have much time left to have fun, the blonde said excitedly. And have you really been having fun? Have you done something wild? Maybe gone skydiving, danced at a carnival, hitchhiked to another country? No? Then why don't you at least flirt with that handsome guy? And if you spend the night with him? With a stranger? Diana exclaimed in surprise. 
Yes. Her friend raised her voice. Yes. Why not? What's stopping you? Let me remind you that your husband Chmuz band, Ignacio, left you at the most difficult time in your life. He went to his just a friend. Her last words were spoken in a comical imitation of Ignacio's voice. That's not a reason to throw myself at the first person I meet, Diana said, hiding a smile. Well, my dear, but you don't have much time to choose men. You know, I wouldn't miss my chance. If he were ogling me, I would have left with him already. So run to your Johnny Depp, her friend insisted. I'm not going to introduce myself to him, no way. I've never picked up men in clubs. But I've seen plenty of documentaries about it, Diana replied knowingly. Diana, Sylvia tried to interrupt her friend, her eyes widening significantly, which Diana, absorbed in her thoughts, didn't notice. And none of them ended in a wedding, you know. Usually, guys like that are horribly conceited but empty. I can imagine us making love under a mirrored ceiling, and for all five minutes of fame, he'll be admiring his reflection and how his muscles ripple on his back and arms. Oh my God, Sylvia suddenly moaned and, giggling, covered her reddened face with her hands. Diana looked at her friend in surprise, not understanding her reaction. The joke was amusing, but not to the extent that her shoulders shook with uncontrollable laughter. However, she quickly realized why her friend had a nervous breakdown when she heard a pleasant male voice behind her. I don't have a mirrored ceiling in my bedroom, but we could move the bed closer to the closet. Then I'd have a better view of my muscles. I prefer my glutes. After all, I squatted with a barbell not only for fun. Diana froze, unable to turn around. Meanwhile, in the man's tone, laughter was distinctly heard as he continued to respond to the accusations thrown his way. I swear, I'm polite enough not to ogle people. It just so happened that there was a bar mirror right behind you. I was looking at myself. Well, you understand, the brunette replied. Sylvia, unable to contain herself, burst into laughter. Diana, on the other hand, blushed deeply to the tips of her ears. Please stop making fun of me. I'm already embarrassed enough, the girl mumbled. I'm sorry. I'll forgive you, for sure, if you allow me to buy you a drink and prove that I'm not a bad guy, so to speak, dispel your stereotypes. You know, after your accusatory speech, it's a matter of honor, the brunette replied. Diana found the strength to turn around and raise her gaze to the stranger. Up close, he was even more handsome, sharp lip line, a high forehead, and well-defined masculine facial features. Uh, wow, it's so late already. Sylvia exclaimed in feigned surprise, looking at her completely empty wrist where there was no watch. It's time for good girls like me to go to bed, so you can take my place, young man. Her name is Diana. She loves sweet cocktails, and, by the way, she's not usually this difficult. Just had a bad day. Sylvia hopped off the high bar stool, slung her purse over her shoulder, and tried to make her escape, waving goodbye. What are you doing? Diana hissed, grabbing her friend's hand and keeping her in place. I'm arranging your love life. But I don't even know him. That's the point of getting to know people, Sylvia retorted. Two strangers meet and get to know each other better. Honestly, Diana, I hope that tonight this man will get to know you much better, Sylvia chuckled again, making Diana blush once more. Seeing her friend's hesitation, Sylvia hugged her and whispered, I'll hang out here for a while. Don't worry. If anything, send me a text and I'll pick you up. Okay? Please, just try to enjoy yourself. Maybe this guy will help you take your mind off. Well, you know. Stepping back, she planted a kiss on Diana's cheek, leaving a smudge of lipstick behind. Casting one more glance at the brunette, Sylvia disappeared into the crowd of dancing people. Diana let out a long sigh, watching her friend go, but then turned to her new conversation partner. So, Diana, the man smiled gently. I swear I'm not a maniac. You know... Any self-respecting maniac would say the exact same thing, Diana retorted, still feeling very awkward after her embarrassment. Fair enough, the man nodded. 
At first, Diana felt tense. After all, her husband, whom she had loved all her life, had recently left her. He left her in a cruel way, so she was reluctant to trust men. But whether it was the cocktails taking effect or the charming brunette being such a great conversationalist, she quickly relaxed. Soon, Diana was laughing heartily at his jokes. Furthermore, her cheeks started to hurt from smiling and laughing, and she could feel her stomach beginning to ache from all the laughter. She was sure that in another hour, she'd leave the club with well-defined abs. It turned out that young people were on the same wavelength. They easily found common topics and had many similar interests both in their professional and personal lives. The man invited Diana to dance a couple of times, both slow and fast dances. Diana was simply delighted as her new acquaintance turned out to be an excellent dancer and skillfully led her. Her body literally followed the man's movements. They moved in unison as if rehearsing. After about an hour and a half, when Diana received an SMS from her friend indicating that she was ready to go home, she realized that she didn't want to leave the club. She messaged Sylvia back, telling her she'd stay a bit longer. In response, she received a flurry of fireworks emojis and a couple of others whose meaning she felt too embarrassed to inquire about. Meanwhile, a couple more drinks with generous servings of refreshing ice appeared on the bar counter. Let's drink to our acquaintance. The man said, Wait, what's your name? Diana asked before taking a sip of her drink. Her consciousness, which seemed to be drifting on the waves of alcohol consumed in the euphoria of the meeting, was shocked. She had been talking to this man for an hour, almost falling for him, and she hadn't even bothered to find out his name. Eduardo, he introduced himself with a smile, swaying the ice cubes in his glass, making them clink against the glass walls. Oh, I have a boss named Eduardo too, Diana said. Ahem. But at work, they call him. She lowered her voice to a whisper, as if unwilling to share such confidential information with the other clubgoers. After uttering an indecent curse, the girl stepped back, giggled, but then blinked in fear, realizing that she had just insulted someone and behaved incorrectly. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. He's just such a person, she apologized. I think they call my boss that for a reason. They say he's extremely nasty, rarely shows up in the office because he's constantly on the road, but he always manages to find someone to fire. Can you imagine? I work there, not much, but I've already heard plenty of horror stories. And the girls call him that because they're offended, like he doesn't pay attention to them. You know, I'm a tough boss too, Eduardo smirked. I don't like it, for example, when my subordinates are lazy or try to flatter me. I dislike the unwillingness to admit one's mistakes and to take responsibility. I can't stand inappropriate criticism of someone else's work in the absence of alternative ideas. Well, not many people like that, Diana nodded approvingly. At that moment, a guy appeared behind her who was impatient to place an order with the barman. He squeezed in next to Diana, pushing her in the back. Because of this, the girl leaned forward, falling into Eduardo's arms. Oh! She exclaimed, finding herself in his strong embrace. She felt the scent of the brunette's cologne, tangy, with hints of wood. Oops, I'm sorry. The man apologized. It's okay, the girl awkwardly smiled, nodding at him and distancing herself from Eduardo. However, her hand remained in his palm. She didn't want to take it away, and the man didn't rush to unclasp his fingers. Instead, Eduardo looked into her eyes. His fingers gently started to stroke the back of Diana's hand. She wanted to ask Eduardo something else, like which company he led, or at least what cologne he used, or if Eduardo knew that his gray eyes resembled the morning mist and silver. But all her thoughts flew out of her head in an instant. Diana remembered again how boring her life had been, so she took a deep breath, as if preparing to plunge into icy water, and then leaned forward, her lips touching the man's. He froze for a moment, not expecting this, but then responded to the kiss. Sparks coursed through Diana's body, and in her veins, instead of blood, it seemed like lava was flowing. Butterflies fluttered in her stomach, a sensation she hadn't felt in a long time. 
Eduardo's lips swallowed a quiet moan, one that Diana didn't expect from herself. In any case, she hadn't anticipated kissing a man in a nightclub in front of everyone. As if remembering the onlookers, she interrupted the kiss and whispered directly into Eduardo's lips. Can we leave here? The man's eyes darkened and his breath hitched. The chemical reaction that had occurred between them had captivated them both. He nodded, unable to answer. Taking Diana's hand, Eduardo helped her get off the stool. Forgetting about their drinks, they left the club. Diana rubbed her eyes but still hesitated to open them. Her whole body ached and her head felt heavy. Good morning, she heard a male voice. At that moment, she suddenly remembered where she was and who she was with. She opened her eyes, noticing the man next to her. Good morning, she croaked in response, blushing. Eduardo smiled, pulling the naked woman closer to him. She comfortably settled on his chest. A pleasant warmth and intimacy spread throughout her body. The night had been magical. Diana, slightly hungover, didn't remember everything in detail, but what remained in her memory made her blood boil anew. She giggled into Eduardo's neck, thinking that she had something to boast about to Sylvia, and her friend probably wanted all the juicy details. Not disappointed, are you? Eduardo suddenly inquired. In what? Diana raised her head. Well, there are no mirrors here, he reminded her, looking mischievously at the brunette. She snorted and playfully pinched his side. But you have a huge window. Maybe you like being watched? She raised her eyebrows, nodding toward the window. I love it. Pigeons, seagulls, butterflies, he nodded. I just adore it. Eduardo lived in a luxurious neighborhood in a two-story apartment. His bedroom was spacious but furnished in a Spartan style. A massive bed, a wardrobe, and bedside tables were the extent of the furnishings. However, the window was breathtaking, spanning the entire wall. Diana thought it must be lovely here during rainy weather. Currently, the sun was shining brightly in the sky. Glancing at it, the girl became alert. What time is it? She asked. I have to go to work. But today is Sunday. Come up with another excuse to escape from me, the man smiled. Of course, I don't have to work until tomorrow, Diana explained, rolling off the bed and scanning the room for her clothes. However, I need to finish a project urgently. The boss is coming tomorrow. You know, the nasty one. I told you about him. I don't want to get fired so soon. I really like my job, and I already took a whole week of leave. By the way, he doesn't like that either. Probably, he doesn't like anything except his subordinates' tears. Grumbling about her boss, Diana began to gather her things. She found her underwear, but she couldn't remember where she had taken off her red dress, hoping it was at least in the hallway and not in the taxi. I can't believe your boss is such an unpleasant guy, the man remarked. With his hands behind his back, he watched Diana with pleasure. The girl shrugged, trying to run her fingers through her hair. I can't draw conclusions until I meet him in person, she reasonably pointed out. However, the rumors about this person don't make for pleasant interactions. I'm afraid of him in advance, you know? Diana pronounced the boss's name as if tasting it, Eduardo Suarez. Haven't you heard of him by any chance? She turned over her shoulder and saw that the brunette was barely containing his laughter. I've heard of him, Eduardo nodded. He pushed the blanket aside and got up, moving smoothly, like a predator, toward the girl. She looked at him suspiciously. You've heard that name? Diana clarified. He nodded affirmatively once more. I'm well acquainted with him, Diana, and now so are you. Maybe you can draw your conclusions? It took Diana some time for Eduardo's words to sink in. Then she gasped and recoiled. No, the girl exclaimed, first paling and then blushing. No. Last night, you were all about saying yes and yes again. And a couple of times, you called me oh God, Eduardo remarked. I quite like that. Diana swallowed and covered her chest, although it didn't really help. 
This is a nightmare, the girl mumbled. Did I sleep with the boss? Am I fired? Usually, people get promoted for that, not fired, Eduardo noted. It was evident that the situation amused him, and Diana's reaction was endearing. However, Molina herself was in shock. This is not funny. She shook her head anxiously. You're not joking, are you? Please tell me you're joking. I can show you my passport. I didn't hide where I work. I thought you understood who am I, Eduardo shrugged. Diana took a deep breath and then exhaled. She hadn't paid attention to how much alike their professions were last night. How much had she told him about her colleagues and her boss? Diana backed towards the exit. I really have to go now. We can have breakfast. Then I'd call a taxi if you're in a hurry, Eduardo began, no longer smiling but frowning. Listen, don't take everything so close to heart, okay? I liked you. I thought you liked me too. I'm not as much of a jerk as they say. I'm just strict and take my work seriously since I founded this company from scratch. It's frustrating when some people don't take my life's work seriously. It's a shame if they see aggression in it. Diana didn't hear his words anymore. She nodded strangely, then turned on her heels and hurried downstairs. She found her dress near the staircase. Diana, wait a minute. The man tried to stop her, but the girl didn't want to wait. She quickly put on her dress, grabbed her shoes, and rushed out of the apartment barefoot. She was ashamed. Incredibly ashamed. She spent the rest of the weekend recalling what she had talked about with Eduardo. She realized with horror that she had been too candid. On Monday, Diana came to work with her head held low. She hadn't finished the project, but she had brought a resignation letter. What's wrong, Diana? Her colleague Olegario asked. Have you already seen the boss or something? Has he arrived? She raised her head. Yes, the very first one. He's in the office. He's very angry. I haven't seen him so grim in a long time. Diana nervously swallowed, pushing dark locks behind her ears. She took a deep breath and headed towards Eduardo's office. Knocking and hearing a come in, she entered. Eduardo was sitting in the boss's chair, bathed in morning light. Diana's gaze slid over the man, ignoring the butterflies in her stomach. Eduardo Suarez, Diana murmured, hello. I brought. Well, here, she placed a resignation letter on the boss's desk. What's this? He looked at the paper. A resignation letter. I can't work here. Are you kidding, Diana? Eduardo got angry. Shall I tear this paper apart? or will you remove it from my sight? Diana opened her mouth at such audacity and looked at her boss. Don't you allow me to quit my job? Is there a reason? He raised his eyebrows. Besides the fact that I saw you naked. Well, you know, Diana mumbled, suddenly forgetting that she was embarrassed. Eduardo, on the other hand, unexpectedly smiled, and his gaze became warmer. I like you better with that expression on your face, he said approvingly before taking the resignation letter, crumpling it, and tossing it into the trash can. Diana snorted, but then her shoulders slumped again. Listen, this was a mistake. I won't be able to work with you. I'm not even sure I want to spend my time on work right now, she said. What do you mean? The girl looked into his gray, attentive eyes and decided to tell him the whole truth. She knew that after this, he would likely turn away from her, but perhaps out of pity, he might even give her a bonus. I don't have much time left. That's what I mean, Diana declared. Then she simply went on to tell him everything that was on her mind. She told him about her visit to the doctor, her decision, and her runaway husband. Understand, Eduardo, I'm not like that. I don't just jump into bed with strangers, I promise. It's just that you caught me at a difficult moment, she tried to explain, sitting across from her boss. I'm sorry I didn't tell you right away, but talking about how little time I have left would have ruined the romance, and I just wanted to relax, breathe, forget who I am, what's happening to me. 
Honestly, even if it was for a short time, I succeeded. Maybe that's why the news that you're my boss knocked me off my feet. Fate seems to be laughing at me, constantly tripping me up. I wanted to do something weird and unusual, and where did it lead me? Even the man I really liked, to whom I opened up, turned out to be my boss. This is nonsense. Diana shook her head as if astonished by her own words. She didn't even realize what she was saying. She just used Eduardo's silence as an opportunity to express herself. He listened attentively, without interrupting. He watched her closely, as if peering into her soul. When Diana fell silent, he asked quietly, So, you really like me, right? The girl blushed. I didn't mean. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I told you I'm dying and going through a divorce, and you only heard that? You really are self-absorbed, she chuckled with a hint of irony. Eduardo smiled. I just heard that I'm liked by a young woman who captivated me at first sight. And then everything else was a blur, he said, making Diana self-consciously examine her nails. I don't understand, are you joking or, she squinted, looking into the man's face. She remembered very well how her fiancé, with whom she had lived for so many years, had run away from her. So why was this, let's be honest, a completely unfamiliar person so calm, like a Chinese figurine? Then Diana thought that this might be the answer to her question. She was nobody to him, so he didn't care. For some reason, this thought pricked her like a sharp needle in her heart. It felt unpleasant. Eduardo, however, unaware of her thoughts, hurried to explain himself. Diana, I'll need some time to digest all the information you just poured on me, the boss admitted honestly. But I want to say again that none of your words convinced me to sign a resignation letter or forget about how good it was with you. And anyway... Didn't you say you wanted to try something unusual for yourself, step out of your comfort zone? How about an office romance with the boss? Eduardo winked playfully. Diana shyly smiled, shaking her head. She slowly, as if reluctantly, looked away from the handsome man's face. She surveyed the office, where she was for the first time. On one of the walls, made to resemble gray bricks, hung several interesting and colorful vintage posters with retro advertisements. In another corner, there was a shelf with a record player for vinyl. The girl remembered that Eduardo liked retro. He loved history and had a deep passion for traveling. She thought she would like to get to know him better, and the feeling that she was somehow familiar with him wouldn't leave her. There are encounters in life that feel like meeting old and close friends, like meeting people who are kindred spirits, who find a place in your heart from the very first glance and word. Eduardo turned out to be just that kind of person. These thoughts both reassured and saddened her. She didn't want to think about the future, to tie her life to new relationships and feelings because she already knew that there was no happy ending in her story. I'll give you a penny for your thoughts, Eduardo broke the silence, using an old British idiom. Diana looked at him sincerely and openly. I wouldn't want to start a relationship. Back in the nightclub, I thought I'd run away from you in the morning like Cinderella from the Prince, she confessed. I thought it would be my daring adventure, a flash of passion with a stranger like in American movies, and maybe even revenge on my ex-husband, probably. Nice to hear that I've become an instrument of revenge, Eduardo grumbled, but his eyes sparkled with mischief. Well, then, how about we settle for friendship? What do you think? Diana bit her lip for a moment but then hesitantly nodded. I would like a friend like you. It settled then, Eduardo clapped his hands. From now on, we're best friends. Oh, just don't say that to Sylvia, okay? Diana laughed. My friend who was at the club last night. She'll claw your eyes out, but she won't give up her status as my best friend to anyone. Eduardo smiled gently at Diana, gazing at her face. From the look in his gray eyes, butterflies fluttered in the pit of the girl's stomach again, tickling her with their delicate wings. She realized that being friends with this man would be quite a challenge. Shall I get to work then? She asked uncertainly. Eduardo nodded, then added in a playfully business-like tone. I'm expecting a project for the Miss Molina clothing brand from you. 
And don't forget, we have lunch at my favorite cafe at 1 p.m. I'll come by to pick you up. You don't mind, do you? Diana giggled, feeling like a schoolgirl, and shook her head. How can I say no to my scary and mean boss? She playfully replied, getting up from her seat. Eduardo looked at her, displeased either with her response or his own reputation. I'll dock your bonus, he lazily threatened, returning to the paperwork he had been working on before she came in. Diana grinned widely and left the office. She leaned her back against the wooden door and closed her eyes, still smiling. Her heart felt warm, and there was a strange sense of anticipation, like in childhood on the eve of holidays, when a child falls asleep in nervous but pleasant excitement, expecting magic, gifts under the tree from Santa Claus, or a birthday cake with candles that will surely make all their wishes come true. Diana hadn't felt this pleasant sensation for a very long time. It had disappeared from her life long before the doctors gave their diagnosis. She had simply sunk into routine, like travelers getting stuck in quicksand. Her relationship with Ignacio had lost its spark a long time ago. He didn't make an effort to please his wife anymore. There were no surprises, no romance. All of that seemed to have been left behind during their university days, buried under the weight of everyday life. That's why now, at this moment, Diana felt like her blood was starting to boil again. It was as if flowers were blossoming in her chest, the first signs of spring breaking through the frozen ground. She felt, perhaps for the first time, that everything would be okay. At least for now, at least in this moment, but it would be. As the door closed behind Diana, the smile slowly faded from Eduardo's face. He pushed the documents aside with a hint of annoyance, placed his elbows on the desk, and buried his face in his hands, trying to shake off the accumulated exhaustion. The insomnia of the past few days, coupled with Diana's presence, had taken a toll on him. He chose not to remind her of what had happened between them last night. No, it wasn't about the bedroom scenes or passionate whispers. Those moments were fresh in her memory, but he understood that there was something else she had forgotten. It was what happened just before she fell asleep. Unexpectedly, Diana had sobbed in his arms. Small, fragile, and vulnerable, she had shared her innermost thoughts with him. Her confession was almost the same as the story she had told him in his office today, but it was much more scattered, emotional, and touching. That night, she had told him how her husband had treated her, what verdict the doctors had given her, and how she didn't want to live on pills but wanted to breathe fully until her last moment. He had wiped away her tears as she confessed that she had never been to the country she had dreamt of. She had wanted to see whales, dolphins, or any marine creatures in their natural habitat. I love the seas and oceans so much. You know, one summer, I read Jojo Moy's Silver Bay, she had said, nestling into Eduardo's chest. After that, I had a dream of seeing whales someday. I know I didn't have much time left. That night, Eduardo hadn't been able to sleep. He looked at Diana's face, illuminated by the moonlight, ran his fingers through her soft hair spread across his pillow, and thought. He thought a lot and came to the conclusion that he didn't want to let her go, even though it was an incredibly difficult decision for him. He had lost someone close to him, a fiancé who never became his wife. The tragedy had occurred three years ago. But he couldn't just cast Diana out of his heart, so he had thrown himself into work with such dedication and fervor that he had earned the reputation of a tough boss among his employees. Of course, he had no interest in other women after losing his beloved. In his life, there had only been minor and brief flings, and now there was Diana, so charming, sincere, and incredibly beautiful. A woman whose heart had been broken so mercilessly. Eduardo Suarez's agency was known for its charitable work. In him, there had always been a thirst to help people, a thirst that only grew stronger after he lost his fiancée. However, he couldn't simply call his desire to help Diana philanthropy. It ran deeper. Diana had captured his heart back in the nightclub. With her delicate fingers, she had touched the strings of his soul that had long been silent. They had started to play a melody once more, and his heart had adopted a special rhythm for her. Eduardo didn't want to let go of this so easily. He felt that being close to her was the right thing to do, 
as if he had been waiting for this meeting with Diana. He looked out of the window at the grayish sky with scattered clouds. One of them resembled a rabbit with long ears, while the rest looked like sweet cotton candy. He drummed his fingers on the table, trying to calm the excitement that had been gripping him for the past day. He knew he couldn't cure her illness, but he wanted to try to make her life beautiful, the way she had always dreamed of. Eduardo picked up his smartphone and, finding the necessary number in his contacts, pressed the call button. Marta, hello, he began softly. I'm interested in cruise liners and... Where in the world can we see whales? The sky hung low and gray, as if it were about to descend into the waters surrounding the cruise liner. Diana, on the other hand, thought that the sky and the ocean waters resembled Eduardo's eyes, a man who had suddenly entered her life in the most difficult moment and had then turned her world upside down. After that candid conversation, they truly became friends. They talked a lot, went out often to movies and restaurants. Eduardo invited her home, cooked dinner himself. They talked about work and life, shared dreams and interests. Every morning, Diana began to look forward to seeing Suarez, just to have a conversation with him. Surprisingly to herself, she realized that every night, as she fell asleep, she thought about Eduardo, and when she woke up, she was thinking about him too. A month later, when Eduardo brought Diana tickets for a cruise, she was speechless. Of course, she considered it madness to just up and leave for an unknown destination, to leave her life and job behind. However, Sylvia stated categorically, It would be madness not to do this, Diana. I'll end our friendship if you refuse, she assured her friend. You'll regret it for the rest of your life if you don't. And anyway, look at how Eduardo looks at you. We decided to stay friends, Diana said weakly and hesitantly. Sylvia snorted, rolling her beautiful eyes to the ceiling. Oh sure, of course. Between friends, there's always so much tension that it's scary to even strike a match. God forbid everything goes up in flames. You're in love with each other, you silly. She declared emphatically. But I can't treat him like that, Diana reminded her. He told me he lost his fiance. Do you want Eduardo to lose another person? Sylvia's smile faded, but she quickly pulled herself together. Or maybe you won't decide for him what to do. The girl suggested, crossing her arms. Just open up to him, or at least meet him halfway. Don't shut yourself in, then Sylvia took the cruise tickets and waved them in front of Diana's face. Start with this, okay? I apologize for the confusion. Here's the text with hyphens to indicate direct speech. Diana, who had dreamed of going on a trip with Eduardo, quickly gave in. Of course, very soon they realized that remaining friends was a futile idea. A romance had ignited between the young people even before they set foot on the ship's deck. Eduardo even had to negotiate changing cabins. Their cabins were in the luxury category, but they were separate. Now, this arrangement didn't suit the lovers. They wanted to travel together, live in the same cabin, sleep at night in a double bed, or not sleep. The journey turned out to be wonderful. Diana woke up in Eduardo's arms every day, jokingly asking him to pinch her to make sure she was only sleeping. Suarez complied with the requests gladly, gently pinching his girlfriend's thigh or side. It didn't cause any pain, but it was very ticklish, which made Diana start giggling. Then the tickling turned into kisses, making the girl feel like she was floating on clouds. One day during the cruise, their liner, with the romantic name Call of the Ocean, was sailing north of Coronation Island. That's when a real miracle happened. Whales. Someone from those who were walking on the deck shouted, There are whales. And, my God, there are so many of them. Can there be so many? Passengers, including some zoologists, rushed to the deck, gazing wide-eyed at the endless waters. The water was filled with whales as far as the eye could see. When the ship approached closer, the sounds of the whale spouting fountains surrounded the people from all sides. They were loud, unceasing, and evoked awe. People tried to capture this delightful moment on camera film. Diana didn't attempt to take her phone out of her pocket. She froze like a statue. 
It seemed like she had even stopped breathing, let alone blinking. Her heart was beating so fast that she had to press her hands to her chest. She was afraid it would simply leap out, breaking through her ribcage. Her lungs were filled with a sense of wonder. Wails in the wild filled her with excitement and delight. Eduardo stood nearby, leaning on the railing with his hands. They were wearing orange life vests. The zoologist, a gray-haired man who stood next to Diana and Eduardo, had his glasses fog up. He took them off, hastily wiping them with a cloth he pulled from his pocket, and then put them back on. I can't believe my eyes. He whispered reverently. You have no idea how lucky we are. Eduardo looked at the man with interest. Really? Didn't we come here to see the whales? It was definitely mentioned in my brochure, he smiled. The man shook his head, not taking his eyes off the water. The thing is not about that, young man. Of course, humpback whales gather in this area because the local waters are rich in krill, which they feed on. The astonishing thing is the sheer number. Just witnessing such a large group of whales is an enormous stroke of luck, the man passionately explained. This hasn't happened, mind you, since the 20th century. At that time, due to the popularity of whaling, the whale population critically declined, pushing this species to the brink of extinction. Well, their population seems perfectly fine, Eduardo remarked, looking at the countless whales. You have no idea how lucky we are, the man whispered again. Eduardo smiled, then turned his gaze to the silent Diana. The smile froze on his face. The corners of his lips quivered, slowly drooping. He noticed that Diana was crying. She realized it herself, but not immediately. Her vision simply blurred, and the picture became blurry. She blinked, trying to get rid of the uninvited tears so as not to miss a moment of this. Hey, are you okay? He asked with concern. Yes, Diana nodded, wiping away the tears with her fingers. It's just that I'm so happy. I can't contain my emotions. There are so many inside me that I don't even understand what I'm feeling. My head is spinning with delight. Can you imagine? Eduardo lowered the railings and stood behind Diana, embracing her tenderly. She leaned her head on his shoulder, still gazing into the distance. Eduardo rested his chin on the top of her head. He thought about how pleasant it was to hug this girl, as if she were his other half, a girl created just for him. Thank you. Thank you, the girl whispered, her voice trembling. You know, I love you. Something inside Suarez snapped. She hadn't said those words before. He hadn't either. However, even the sight of countless whales didn't fill Eduardo with as much excitement as Diana's words did. I hope you're not saying this just because of the emotions, the man suddenly said seriously, because I love you too, Diana. At night, they lay in their cabin. Eduardo was already breathing evenly, falling asleep. Diana, however, couldn't close her eyes. She kept replaying in her head the moment when she first saw the whales. Then she thought about her confession to Eduardo's boss. The words had long been on her tongue, but she didn't consider it fair to say them as if they were a burden or an obligation. But Sylvia was right. She couldn't decide for Eduardo what to do with her feelings, whether to accept them or reject them. He had already given her too much, and even if their fairy tale ended on the shore, she wouldn't blame him. However, he reciprocated her feelings, and now Diana didn't know what to do. Eduardo, are you asleep? She asked quietly at night, not expecting an answer, but Suarez responded. It all depends on you, princess, he mumbled sleepily, brushing her hair with his lips. Your word, and I'll be awake and cheerful. Just give me five minutes and a cup of coffee. Diana smiled. Eduardo really treated her like a princess. He protected her and tried to fulfill her wishes. She was living in a fairy tale. I thought, she bit her lip, hesitating to voice her thoughts. I thought that when we get back, I will finally go see a doctor again. You know, it's strange, but I feel so wonderful. Every day brings me happiness. I only get better. I just don't believe in my illness anymore. And if it really is killing me, then I would like to. 
I want to, she exhaled with a struggle, trying to overcome the huge lump that had lodged in her throat. For some reason, it was so difficult for her to say the phrase, I want to live. However, Eduardo heard her and understood. His hands embraced her more tightly, drawing her closer. I didn't want to bring up this topic, Diana, because it should be your choice, he began cautiously. But I find myself thinking about it more and more. Let's try it together, okay? You're not alone. I'll be there no matter what happens. Diana felt relieved. In Eduardo's arms, she felt protected. With Eduardo by her side, she could allow herself the audacious, brave thought that everything would be fine. However, she had no idea what awaited her. A black car stopped in the parking lot next to the private clinic. Diana looked at the beautiful building, its windows reflecting the sunlight. Last time, she had also gone to a private clinic, but it was the one in her neighborhood. That building didn't look nearly as luxurious, but Eduardo insisted on the best doctor in the city. Well, I'm going, she said with deliberate cheerfulness, leaning forward to give the driver a kiss on the cheek before leaving. Eduardo accepted the kiss, but he looked at her with surprise. Where are you going? Alone? No, I'll go with you, his voice sounded almost indignant. Eduardo's whole demeanor suggested that he was displeased with Diana's assumption that he would let her face fade alone. But they won't let you into the doctor's office anyway, Diana, she shrugged. And you have things to do today. As if there's anything more important than your health, Diana. Let's go. If they won't let me in, I'll wait for you in the corridor. Then we'll go eat or take a walk, okay? Eduardo unfastened his seatbelt, intending to get out of the car. Diana, on the other hand, froze in her seat, watching as he exited the vehicle. She still couldn't get used to such care and tenderness that this wonderful man bestowed upon her. Unintentionally, she compared Eduardo and Ignacio again. She remembered that when she went to the hospital that fateful time, Ignacio didn't even call her after the doctor's appointment, even though he knew she had a poor family medical history and was worried about her health. She remembered walking out of the clinic and wandering the city alone, while rain drizzled from the sky. She remembered feeling devastated but not finding the strength to call anyone. Her phone remained silent until Sylvia finished work and called her friend to ask what the doctor had said to Diana. Ignacio, after their breakup, didn't even call her just to find out if she was still alive. Diana snapped back to reality when someone knocked on her window, and then the car door swung open. Suarez gallantly offered her his hand, smiling. After you, milady. She smiled in response, and when she placed her small palm in his hand, she felt a wave of relief. The fear of visiting the doctor began to dissipate because nothing worried her when Eduardo was by her side. She was prepared for any news. However, what the young couple heard after the doctor's examination left them in a state of shock. The doctor performed an ultrasound, reviewed the results of the tests and examinations that Diana had done earlier and brought with her. Then he looked at Diana with a strange expression on his face. Excuse me, who told you it was time for you to die? The doctor inquired. Can I have the name of the hero? Diana was taken aback by the question and the tone in which it was asked. Yes, she had heard about medical humor. Sometimes she had even been shocked by the jokes of surgeons and pathologists, but this time she felt an unpleasant sensation. Eduardo, who had been allowed into the doctor's office, also didn't like the question. He sat in the adjacent chair and leaned forward, intending to ask the doctor to choose his words more carefully. However, Diana squeezed his fingers in time and blurted out. The doctor from the private clinic, she said, furrowing her brow as she tried to remember his name. Um, Reyes. Something like that. Healthy you clinic. The doctor chuckled and shook his head, shuffling some papers. There we go, he said without hiding his amusement. It's all starting to make sense now. Without explaining his behavior, the specialist typed something on his laptop keyboard, then turned the screen toward Diana and Eduardo. Here, take a look at your doctor, he offered, displaying an article from a local news portal. Reyes Daniel, a frogster. 
arrested and already serving his sentence. He took bribes, sold free medicines, and most often, he conned people into unnecessary treatments, scaring them with terrible, deadly diagnoses. It's strange that this news didn't reach you, Diana. They've been covering it on every channel recently, talking about this scoundrel from every angle. But we weren't in town. We sailed to see the whales, Diana muttered, bewildered, while her eyes scanned the details of the case. Indeed, there was a photo of the doctor she had visited. It was hard to forget the face of the person who promised you death within a year. Meanwhile, the doctor, upon hearing that Diana had gone whale watching, squinted suspiciously, as if contemplating whether she should pay a visit to a psychiatrist as well. Then he recalled how much her partner had paid for an urgent appointment, and he decided that whales could very well exist in their world. Wait a minute, Eduardo interjected, and his voice was extremely tense. What does all of this mean for us? He lied to Diana, am I understanding this correctly? She. She's healthy? Diana only realized what the doctor was leading to at that moment. She couldn't even entertain the thought of such an outcome and had never allowed such a notion into her mind. Now, however, she froze, her face flushed with blood, and her pulse throbbed in her temples. She squeezed her companion's hand tightly, her nails digging into his skin, leaving faint imprints, but neither of them noticed. The doctor, on the other hand, broke into a smile. It was clear that he took pleasure in delivering good news. He nodded with satisfaction. I won't even suggest additional examinations, Diana, because you are perfectly healthy. Everything that the previous doctor told you. By the way, what kind of doctor was he, anyway? He only brings shame to our profession. The man furrowed his brow for a moment and continued, in any case, all his words and diagnoses were lies. He was just hoping that you'd become one of his victims, that he could drain more money from you. He was operating on a well-established scheme, colluding with other doctors. They've all faced consequences. Initially, they performed all the procedures in their clinic, then claimed they had miraculously saved someone from the brink of death with God's help, which gave their reputation a boost. Thankfully, that chapter is now closed. It's good that you didn't agree to be treated by him. Diana finally tore her gaze away from the doctor's face, looking at his laptop, then at his desk. However, she didn't really register anything in front of her. Emotion swirled inside her, jostling for attention. One would recede, only to be replaced by another. Shock, amazement, joy, fear that it was just another mistake. Disbelief, but a strong desire to believe. I can't believe it, Diana shook her head. Eduardo lifted her hand and kissed the tips of her fingers, which helped her regain her composure somewhat. She turned to him and noticed the genuine excitement shining in his gray eyes. It was no longer a fog or a sky with leaden clouds, it was the shimmer of silver, bordered by onyx, in his pupils. Only after seeing the smile on his face and the suspicious gleam of tears in his eyes did Diana realize that all of this was real. It was happening to her. I love you, Eduardo said, replacing all other joyful words, regardless of the doctor's presence. And I love you, Diana echoed, feeling tears welling up on her face once again. She had been crying often lately, but it was only out of happiness. Almost immediately after they received the happy news, Eduardo proposed to Diana. At that moment, she realized that she was still legally married. She referred to Ignacio as her ex-husband and hadn't seen him in a year, but officially, they were still together. Diana quickly filed the necessary divorce papers. Later, Sylvia joked that it was as if Diana had summoned her ex, like witches summon demons in seances. At first, Ignacio came to her apartment, but not finding her there, he drove to her office. He was surprised when he saw Diana. She wasn't dying, as he had thought. On the contrary, she had blossomed. Love and the wonderful vacation had helped her become even more beautiful than she was before. Her eyes sparkled, and her cheeks had a natural blush that was much more beautiful than any makeup. She was stunning and stylish. Diana, Ignacio murmured, looking at her in amazement, I received the divorce papers and came to talk. 
You didn't have to bother coming, really, Diana shook her head. Nowadays, everything can be done online. Can you imagine how convenient that is? Ignacio hesitated, shifting his weight from one foot to the other. He surveyed the office where Diana worked, then once again, as if hypnotized, stared greedily at Diana. This letter of happiness was unexpected for me, he admitted. Really? Diana raised an eyebrow. For me, it was unexpected and quite annoying that we didn't finalize the divorce earlier. Now we'll have to wait until everything gets legalized. It's strange that you didn't think about it, especially with your new relationship and all. How did Olga tolerate the fact that you were married? Or does she exclusively like someone else's men? Diana leaned back in her chair, observing Ignacio. He looked somewhat beaten down and pitiful at that moment. Perhaps he had always been like this, and Diana just hadn't noticed the flaws in people close to her. She hadn't even noticed Ignacio's affair. Ignacio grimaced and took a seat in the chair opposite Diana. He picked up a small statue she had bought on their cruise when they stopped at a port, turned it around, and then placed it back in its spot. Only then did he confess. Things aren't going smoothly with Olga. I've been having problems with my business, you know, that's why I came. How are we going to divide our assets? I was hoping to use the apartment as collateral, and... Diana felt a wave of nausea when she understood the hidden meaning behind his words. Wait, Ignacio, she stopped him, holding her hand up like a signal to stop. Are you suggesting that you were waiting for me to die so you could have our apartment? Is that what you mean? Ignacio first appeared embarrassed, but then remembered he was a man and straightened up. Isn't it logical, Diana? Tell me about your plans, Diana unexpectedly asked, leaning forward and resting her chin on her crossed fingers. I'm very curious now. Do you plan to sell the apartment and invest the money in your business, or do you intend to live in it with your secretary, who's more than just a friend? This is not funny. Ignacio snapped, raising his voice. You have no idea what I'm going through right now. I invested in the wrong venture, you understand? I listened to that idiot, hoping to make a profit. Now I have a ton of debts and major tax problems. If I don't pay off the debts, they might even bring charges against me. Olga, she. She ran away with some idiot as soon as the tax authorities came knocking with accusations. I'm in a deeper. Abyss. Do you even realize how hard it is for me? Diana Molina, who had hoped to become Diana Suarez as soon as possible, had not changed in the least. Ignacio's accusations and outbursts didn't affect her. She was even surprised at her own reaction. It turned out that Eduardo had taken up all the space in her heart and soul, pushing her ex-husband out along with all his belongings. There was not even a trace of feelings for Ignacio. She didn't feel sorry for him either, but Silvio would probably say that karma had caught up with him. Diana sighed and settled back into her previous position. Fine. However, I'd like you not to delay signing the divorce papers. This situation has dragged on for too long. You'll get half of the acquired assets. By the way, as far as I remember, a business established during the marriage is also divided equally. Nevertheless, I don't want to take on your debts, so you can keep your company. Consider it a gesture of goodwill on my part, she said in a business-like tone, as if closing a deal with a client. But the apartment was inherited from my parents. It's not jointly acquired property, so don't count on it, okay? It's time for you to take your problems into your own hands. I've put up with you for far too long. Ignacio shook his head and leaned forward. Are you serious, Diana? Tell me, why do you need that apartment? You have no one except me. We've been through so much together. Well, if you want, his gaze nervously darted around her face. If you want, I'll come back to you. I'll take care of you, carry you in my arms. You know, I realized how much I loved you when I was with Olga. I made a mistake. This time, the feeling of nausea in Diana's throat became even more pronounced. Her eyes narrowed, and her gaze turned stern. 
Unfortunately, I have bad news for you, Ignacio, Diana said curtly. I will live. I don't know for how long. Maybe a year. Maybe ten years. Maybe I'll live to be a hundred. What? Ignacio exclaimed in surprise. But you said. Diana shrugged irritably. The doctor was a fraud. The story is long, and I don't want to retell it. But wait. Then we can start everything anew, right? Ignacio suddenly perked up. You and me together, like in the good old days. You always found ways to solve any problems, Diana. I really appreciated that. It's impossible, Diana shook her head. My fiancé would object. You're who? Ignacio asked, his face contorted as if he had been slapped. Diana turned a photo frame toward him. In the bright snapshot, Eduardo and Diana were captured standing on the cruise ship's bow. In the distance, the ocean gleamed like silver. There were whales in the background. Well, that's why I'm asking you to hurry, Diana calmly explained. We want to get married. Honestly, I completely forgot that I'm still technically married until Eduardo proposed. Hold on, you must be joking, right? Ignacio shook his head. You're making fun of me? Where was this photo taken? And where did you find this Eduardo? Wasn't that your new boss's name? Diana smiled broadly and nodded. Oh, it's nice to know you remembered something from my stories. Yes, it's him, Eduardo Suarez. I didn't find him at work, but that's another long story that's not for your ears. Ignacio's face turned a shade of crimson, and he started to resemble a ripe tomato. You had an affair with your boss? He exclaimed, jumping to his feet. Diana unexpectedly burst into laughter. This is coming from a man who left me for his secretary? She asked, as if she couldn't believe Ignacio had brought up this topic. You. You just deceived me. Ignacio shouted even louder. You said you were sick, that you only had a year. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ignacio. Diana waved her hand. I didn't do it on purpose. Ignacio, on the other hand, was reeling from the news. He kept switching his gaze between the photo of the happy couple in their bright life vests and the equally content face of his still technically wife. She looked incredibly beautiful at that moment. And there was something about Diana, a certain strength, self-assuredness, that he hadn't noticed before. All of this infuriated and infuriated him. Meanwhile, Diana, as if nothing had happened, continued calmly, glancing at her watch. Listen, you came to my workplace, wasting time with pointless conversations. The divorce will happen anyway. If you want a scandal, we can have one. But I'm not sure you can handle another legal battle, especially with the tax authorities already on your tail. As for the apartment you dreamed of, I don't need it. I don't live there anymore. However, you won't get it, Ignacio. I'm not a charity. Ignacio gritted his teeth, leaning forward and placing his palms on the PR manager's desk. Have you grown sharper teeth in this past year, or what? Have you turned into a shrew, just like your arrogant friend? Diana paused for a moment, then rose from her seat as well. She looked down on the man she had once loved, as if from another lifetime. I've always had sharp teeth. I just didn't sink them into the throats of loved ones, unlike you. I fought on their side. I've always been on your side, Ignacio. You didn't appreciate my loyalty, turned away from me at the worst time, and jumped into the first available bed. So, you simply cannot come back into my life now and make any claims. You're pathetic and disgusting. Leave. Ignacio jerked as if Diana had slapped him. His face was burning, and he felt like she might explode like a ripe watermelon. Without saying another word, Ignacio turned to leave. Just as he reached for the door handle, it swung open, and Eduardo Suarez, the head of the Mirage Agency, stood in the doorway in a business suit. He cast a surprised glance at Diana and her guest, but quickly recognized the man, even though his face was distorted with anger. Ignacio, right? Eduardo asked, 
trying to hide the disdain he felt for this man. I won't shake your hand. Personal bias. Are you here to sign the divorce papers? Ignacio shot Eduardo a fleeting, resentful look. That very fiancé? Well, congratulations. Happiness to you both. Just tell me, what's it like taking someone else's woman? He asked mockingly, venom in his voice. I have no idea, Eduardo replied calmly. I've never had affairs with other men's women. When Diana and I met, she was single. They say some scumbag dumped her when he found out she was sick. There are such moral degenerates, aren't there? Eduardo winked at the now pale Ignacio, but a moment later, the feigned cheerfulness and composure vanished from his face. And now I suggest you leave the premises before my patience runs out. Believe me, I'm trying very hard not to throw you out right now. Ignacio felt in his bones that Eduardo wasn't joking. He wordlessly retreated and sidestepped out of the office. Diana approached her man, hugging him around the waist. I'm sorry for this. I didn't know he'd come here, she said timidly. What an unpleasant guy. How did you ever live with him? I'm itching to punch him, Eduardo remarked unhappily. Don't dirty your hands on him, Diana shook her head, leaning into Eduardo's embrace. He kissed her on the forehead, wrapping his arms around her waist. By the way, why did I come here? I received a response from the jewelry company. They want to sign a lucrative contract with you. You're incredibly smart. Eduardo praised Diana. I'm lucky in every way with you. I'm glad I rejected your resignation. Diana smiled broadly at her future husband, whom she loved with all her heart, and moreover, she knew it was mutual. Over the past year, she had realized something else important. With time, it might turn out that the dark streak in life had actually been a runway because Diana was truly soaring and had no intention of stopping in the midst of this torrent of happiness. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.